Okay, so now we have our HTML. We can see the game board in um, our markup. We need to add some CSS. So the first thing I want to do is to go ahead and give some of these elements a color so that we can see what's going on. So if I can style our game board, remember our game board has an ID of game board. So this is going to be pound game board. And I'm just going to set a background color to red. Um, then we also have our rows, which are a class. So we'll do period row or dot row. And let's give our rows a background color of blue. This is going to look really terrible, but this is mostly just so that we can see what's going on while we style it. And we'll go ahead and get rid of these background colors afterwards. So if we refresh the page, again we don't see anything, and that's because none of these divs have anything inside of them, and so therefore they don't have any height. You can see here that it says um, that the width is 1264 and the height is zero, so that's why we can't see anything. So we do know that our squares are going to be perfect squares, so we can actually style them as such by giving them a width and a height. So I'm going to say that these are, let's go ahead and do like 120 pixels wide, and we'll make them a perfect square by setting the same height. And if we refresh our page, we should start to see something, albeit not what we really want to show. So what we're seeing here is the blue background, which is our row, and we're seeing all of these um, squares on top of one another. If we give each of these a border, we can get a better sense of what's going on exactly. We should see our nine squares, and we also have three rows. They're just all stacked on top of one another. So what we can do is actually float our squares. So I'm going to go ahead and do float left and this will cause all three of these rows to float next to one another and we will have to clear our row afterwards. So let's just go ahead and save that and now you'll see that we have all nine rows on the exact same sorry all nine squares on the exact same row and that's because we haven't cleared our float yet so now let's go ahead and clear the float so we can do clear both and remember this will clear the float and give us our grid uh, in this case now you can see that we have a 3x3 three three grid and then you'll see that our game board is actually not being contained properly um, we add overflow hidden and clear both to allow us to clear this properly and our row is still really wide. Um, what we can do, this is not going to be a responsive game, but what we can do is actually give the game board a width uh, of 120 times 3. So if we think about that, that's going to be 360 pixels wide. We'll refresh that and right now it's broken. It looks like this weird E shape and that's because our width is 360 and our width of each square is 120. So timesing that by 3 would get us 360. The issue is that we also have a border on each side of the square and so we actually end up with another 6 pixels making this um, 6 pixels too wide. So let's go ahead and get rid of our borders for right now because we don't need them and now we'll see that we have a perfect grid of 3 by 3. Um, we can also, now that we have a width on our game board, let's go ahead and center it. We can center this with margin 0 auto. That will place uh, 0 pixels on top and we'll go ahead and place here uh, an equal amount of auto margin on either side to center our game board. Okay, so now that we have this centered, let's go ahead and get rid of our colored blocks and start to add our grid. We will go ahead and find our green background color. We can get rid of that. And if we refresh that, now we'll see our blue row background color. We can get rid of that. And now we'll see our red game board background color, which we'll get rid of as well. So now we still don't see anything. We've added all this work and we have an invisible game board. So what we're going to do is what we want is to create a perfect grid and not show the outer sides of it. So if I open the other example that we have 
it's uh, tic-tac-toe. You'll see here that we want a line going across the bottom of the top row, the bottom of the second row, but we don't want to do the bottom of the third row. And the same goes for each of these columns. We want to add a line on the right and a line on the right, and we can omit the line on this side. So what this is going to allow us to do is create two different classes. So I would do this as a bottom class, which will add a line on the bottom, and then a right class, which will add it to um, a line to the right. And you'll selectively add this class to each row or column as you need it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to look like. So let's go ahead and do dot bottom and dot right. And we're going to do a border bottom of one pixel solid black. When you build out yours you're welcome to make it look however you'd like but if you want to just get it to the point where you um, have a perfect grid then you can customize the colors and how large things are um, come up with whatever um, design that you'd like. So now we have our bottom and our right borders. Um, we will have to think about the width that's going to happen here. So let's just go ahead and create it and then we'll fix it afterwards. So now let's go ahead and selectively add our class. So we're going to add the bottom first. So we want to add the bottom to our squares that have a uh, on the first row and the second row. So all of these are going to get bottom. And if we refresh here, you'll see now that we have the two horizontal lines that we want for our grid. And then we want to add right, but we only want to add right to the first two columns of each row. So let's go ahead and do right. We'll copy that and put it there. We don't want it on that one. Put it there, put it there. And then we don't want the bottom here, but we do want the right. So let's just add right to the bottom. And now when we refresh, you'll see that we have the makings of a grid, but something's wrong. And the something that's wrong is that our widths are off. So what we need to do is go back into our square, and we just need to change this width to be one less than it is. So we're going to do that in both directions. So we'll do 119 and we'll maintain a perfect square with 119 again. This one pixel that's being added in each direction will make up for the difference. And now if we refresh, we have this perfect grid. Uh, you can add margin top to this. So let's do a top margin of like 40 pixels and we'll do zero pixels, zero pixels. Oh, we want to keep auto in there. Um, so 40 on the top, auto on the right, zero on the bottom and auto on the left. So now if we refresh, we bumped that down a little bit. Now we have the grid that we can start to play around with. And as we can see in our HTML, all of these elements have a square class to them, which will be super useful when we get into our jQuery because we can do things like uh, an on-click event in each of these squares to detect what is happening. So in our next video, we will start to add our JavaScripts.